I'm going to share a little bit of my knowledge on how to load the trailer, weight distribution. In the trucking industry, it's not really that common that you got to worry about that. Most of the time, they don't even want you on the dock. They just load the trailer, you haul it, so it's not something you have to worry about. But there are certain loads where you know, need to know how to load it right and distribute the weight. Produce is one of them. Now, this is all going to be based on a common pallet size of 40 inches by 48. Drive in. Inside width is 98 inches to 101 inches. The height is 108 inches to 110 inches. Max cargo weight of 45,000 pounds. You can squeak a little more on there, but 45,000 is a good rule. The pallet count would be 24 to 26 pallets. You can actually get up to 30 in a drive in if you turn them all sideways, but that's not very common unless you're hauling some really light freight. The overall inside length of a drive in is 630 inches. Now let's jump to a reefer. Inside width, 97 and a half inches. Inside height, 103 and a half inches. Pallet count, 24 to 26. You can go up to 28 in there, but that's not very common as well. Max cargo weight of 44,000 pounds. Inside reefer length is 618 inches. The rule that I go by, everyone does everything different and it can be done. You can load a trailer in all sorts of different ways. There's all sorts of different variations. But the rule that I go by on a dry van is no more than 9,600 pounds in the first 12 feet of the trailer. So that comes out to 800 pounds per foot in the first 12 feet. On a reefer, I always figure no more than 8,800 pounds in the first 12 feet of the trailer, and that comes out to 730 pounds a foot. The most common way to load the pallets in the trailer is either straight, sideways, or pinwheel. This load here is going to be an example of a load that I picked up in California of oranges. It was 20 pallets, 2,200 pounds each pallet, 44,000 pounds for the total load. When I go in to pick up the produce, I only go in with a half tank of fuel because with produce, you're generally running maxed out. So on this load, I had to do a single in the nose, a double, a single, and then double all the way back to get the weight back far enough so I wasn't over on my drives. And as you can see on the scale ticket here, when I weighed it out, I was over on my trailer axle. So I went two notches back on my trailer axle, and I was still over a little bit. So I went one more notch back, and then that put me over on my drives. So I had to move the fifth wheel two notches forward to put the weight up on my steer axle. Then I had to remember to slide my fifth wheel back to where it was because I ended up over on my steer axle here on my next load. Here's another example of 25 pallets, 1,760 pounds apiece, totaling 44,000 pound load, half tank of fuel. Just did a single in the nose, double all the way back. Some drivers say it's not necessary to scale loads that are under 42,000 pounds. I've found that to not be true. I've had loads that were loaded kittywampus, and I ended up either over on my drives or over on my trailer axles. So myself, I have found that sometimes I do scale loads that are only 40,000 pounds just to be safe. The company's paying for the scale ticket, and I'm sure most companies would rather that you scale it than uh, get a ticket for it. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.